Hi YouTubers, welcome, excuse the squeaky door, welcome to one of my videos. Today, another day in lockdown, it's the 14th of November, Saturday. It's uh, two minutes past nine in the morning and the barometer says rain. And rain is forecast for us for the next seven to eight days and mist and all that sort of thing. I've got plenty to do. I've got plenty of bowls to work on and wood to do and things like that. But I'm so frustrated I can't do it because I do my lathe work outside because of the dust. The lathe is set up and in the shed but the shed is so damp everything starts to rust. The spell is in the shed rust this time of year, so I have to bring all my tools into the house. So my first job today is getting the lathe into the house. And um, if I leave the centrepiece on for wood turning, what can happen is if the wood gets wet, the centrepiece is like cast iron. It starts rusting and stains the wood and spoils the bowl. So my first priority is to get the wood lathe back in the house so it's not going to get damp and then bring all my chisels in so I've got a clean work area to do my next project and the next project is really to do with my bicycle and again what I've got to do with that I've got to bring it into the kitchen to work on I can't do it outside like I would normally and what I want to do is to improve the brakes because the brakes keep catching on the wheels and when you're cycling, they go <coughs> as the wheel goes round. And it's the same with Jane's bike. I want to see if I can sort that out once and for good. So that's what I'm going to do. Get my tools in from the shed. Oh, the other thing with the shed is any wood, new wood I store in there, will start going mouldy. And I have threw no end of wood away, you know, wooden sheets and things, because I just can't use it. They grow mould. This is inside the shed. You can see the black mould growing on the inside the wood where the water gets in. I've replaced the roof twice. I've replaced all these panels here. And you can see the black mould coming down there. Ah, these modern sheds are absolutely rubbish. The white mould on the roof coming. So, take my chisels in the house. That's the first thing. Then I'll lift the lathe in and get rust build up on here yeah it's beginning to go and i don't want that metal plate to stay in the wood there so that's it can take the chisels in first okay it's getting a bit tidy i have a quick brush up in here and get rid of some of the dust i'm going to put that battery on charge I've got bloody mould growing on my battery charger. Ah. Okay, that's a little bit tidier in here now. And I've got my battery on charge. Still bits of wood everywhere. Oh, took that in the garden. Yeah, at least I've got somewhere to work now. Go in the house and uh, tidy up the lathe. Ah. Right, now I've got the bike in the kitchen and uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and improve the brakes. We have this problem with these, this type of brake here, I don't know if you can see it, this type of brake. Each arm of the brake there and there are spring loaded and they pull out away from the wheel rim. One of the problems is, each one of these is adjustable. But it don't matter how much you clean here and here, there will always be one of them that catches one side, like that. You can see there's a big gap there, and there isn't there. And it doesn't matter how you adjust these screws so they're equal, there'll always be one that will rub on the rim. 
and I'm going to try and resolve that problem. I'm not sure how well this is coming out on camera, but um, I said earlier, you know, these, you can see, they're supposed to be spring loaded, and if one, as you brake it, touches the tyre, but then it doesn't release. Um, I can explain it. They don't both come out the same distance between the rim and the, the brake pad or shoe brake pad, I think they call them on bicycles. So I've got an idea and it's a bit what I call reverse logic. And um, you could say, well, adjust it so it's got a bigger gap both sides. But then what happens? You know, you, get, you go cycling, you do about 10 miles, and then your brakes are going ee, 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 because there's always one of these sh shoes or pads will be rubbing against the rim, and the other one isn't. It does that action. It's not a very good action. So rever I'm going to apply reverse logic. I'm going to limit how far they open. Like a, a limit stop on one side, so that one doesn't go out too far. And that's how I'm going to approach it. But um, I'm very limited on the metal I've got to make some brackets, like an end stop. And I've only got this stuff. And I'm hoping that I can make a bracket, two brackets the same. Now I've just fabricated this bracket. This is going to be like an end stop, and now I need to make another one because there's left and right handed so sided for the brake shoes, brake pads. But uh, yeah, that's one, and then I'll see if I can copy that in the opposite direction. So I've got a left and right handed one, hopefully. Two brackets made. A left and a right. I should have enough to do the back brake, and then I might have a bit to do Jane's. So we we'll see how we go. Let's go in the house now. Now these very simply fit under the original bolt there, which is this one. If I can get it in. adjusting it so there's a gap there so it can't come out too far so this actually limits how far this brake moves out not the gap and then the other one will do the same the other side hopefully Okay, that's it. Got the two front brackets fitted. I've put some super glue on the threads of these small bolts so they don't come undone. I haven't got any screw lock at the moment. And just the brakes. Doesn't stop the brakes being adjusted in a normal way. It allows the brakes to hit the end stops. I think that's a good idea actually. It seems to work. Yeah, I think that's it. Just finished making the brackets. For mine, so that's one used as a guide for the others. There's a left and right handed version, and it's just the position of this hole here, it's in a slightly different position. These are left and right front, left and right rear for Jane's bike. I'm going to do that another day. Um, I've just got to countersink that hole there, 
and I can fit these on the rear of mine and that back on the front and then I'm going to call that it for the day okay that's much as I'm going to do today I'll put the brackets on the front of my bike and I've got them on the back and I'm quite chuffed about that So thanks for watching, please subscribe and like. Hi YouTubers, I thought I'd try and explain how the brake works. Um, okay, each, this is the wheel, this is the brake pads, and in here, on the near side, the off side of the bike, there's springs in here, springs there, springs there, and they're adjustable. And up here goes to the cable. There, there's a cable. Right, so that's a cable, and it squeezes these together. You adjust the gap here and here by the handlebar lever adjustments or the length of the brake cable. So if you get that even and that even, that's fine um, but what happens is when you press it together these both come and pinch the tire and this one goes that way and this one goes that way and you're supposed to set these springs up so they both spring out but what can happen is one of these arms with a brake shoe on it will rub on the tire so where you would have two gaps, you've only got, you've got the gap here, which is equal to the gap there and the gap there. So it's difficult to explain it. But and then some, if you adjust that to make that a stronger spring, so that pulls out. What it does, it over stretches, and that one rubs. They, you know, if that's them together, they can do that across the tyre and the idea is um, if you limit the movement on that one so it can only go so you've got that gap so this has a stop here then this one has automatically got to go the other way to its stop so with a stop there and a stop there Imagine this is what I've done. I've got a stop there and a stop there. So it can't go double the gap. You see what I mean? It can only go the gap you've set it to. So it's, that one will have to operate. I don't know if we can see that. So, so in this diagram, that gap there to the side of the tyre is double what it should be because it's got... It should be a gap there and a gap there. But if you limit the movement on this one, it it can only move to the gap you've set it to. It means the spring on this one will actually pull that one back. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, it's very difficult to explain it unless you've got one of these bikes and know what I'm referring to. There's a spring here and a spring there. And you set them up so they're equal and it works. And so it depends on the temperature and you've got a bit of grit in it it will stick and the spring will either be stronger or weaker and it will never work properly what they do on a lot of bikes they they actually these are the arms they take the brake pipe up like that to a joint and up like that to a joint so when it goes that direction it pulls them equal then when it releases they spring apart equal but having this cable, you know, where the outer's on that one and the inner's on that one, it really just doesn't work. So hopefully I've explained this. Appreciate you watching. And uh, please subscribe and like.